Hi, I'm Bernie from Crafters Companion. I'm going to show you today how to make our reversible vintage clutch bag. It comes in die format, so you don't need to worry about any of those curves. The Gemini is going to cut them out for you, and you're going to be able to make one of these gorgeous bags, which you can actually make reversible as well. Let's see how you do it. So once you get the package and you open it up inside, this is what you've got. You've got all of the dies to make the bag, so every single piece of this bag can be made using these dies. These are our multimedia dies, so they'll go through up to six to eight layers of fabric. You also get full instructions, and these are pictorial instructions. So you're getting a guide on what you need, all your fabric, your wadding, your buttons, your D-rings, your sliders, your buttonhole foot if you're going to put a button on, and all of the details on how to cut the dies, which I'm going to show you how to do. And then inside you're getting how many of each piece to cut, and step by step with pictures on what you're going to do. But I'm going to take you through that today as well. So you're getting all those details. And then they've got, you've got the um, website address here as well, if you need to go to the link, if you need, and save that, because all our videos are saved in there. So let's see how we cut them. Okay, so the first thing we're going to look at is the main panel of the bag. So if I just grab this one here, we can see what it's comprised of. So you've got the back panel and the front. I'll open this up. And then you've got the flap on the top and you've got the handle. So the first thing we're going to do is show you how we're going to lay these out. So with these, you'll think, oh, they look a bit strange. That doesn't look the same size as that because everything's cut on the fold. So you're going to take your die off. Do that. and you're going to get your fabric and we need two of these so for our multimedia dies the regular sandwiches your clear plate your um, metal shim you're going to take your fabric and you're going to fold it now what you need to do is you need to follow the guide of how many you need of each one so I'm going to have my outside as this pretty flowery one so we're going to fold it in half and lay it on our plate and then what you're going to do is take your die and you're going to line up the edges just to the edge of there now there's also a top panel piece so because we can put as many through at the same time on the plate we're going to fill the plate so let's grab the top panel piece and we need two of those as well again you've got this open end which is where it lines up to your fold so you're going to pop them on there and then you're going to pop some tape on. <clears throat> I always like to tape mine down. It stops them from moving and it saves you having any issues with the fabric moving or the dies moving when you're taking your plates to the machine. So I stick to my die, to my outside of my fabric and to the metal plate. And then pop another one on there. Okay, so I'm going to take them to the machine and I'm going to cut those out. So I've got all those pieces cut out. I've also cut my wadding out as well. So you can actually use wadding, you can use interfacing, you can use both if you want it quite sturdy. Foam stabiliser, any stabiliser you want. You can put it without stabiliser. And if you're using a full leather like this one, isn't this fab? You know, you've got the sturdiness in there already. So it's totally your choice what how you want to um, thicken it. So I've got my piece of wadding for one of my front panels. And I've got the instruction book here. So I'm going to open this up. So I'm going to follow this step by step through so you can see exactly how to do it. And I've got my trusty stick and spray. I love this product. It's a temporary adhesive. So it does wash away if you need it to wash away. And I'm actually going to put one of the pieces of wadding on the back of this front panel. And I like to line it up. And then I always lift half back, give the pan a little shake, a little spray, and I'll put that half over, and then you know that's lined up. And then you're going to go to the other side and do the same. And I always spray the wadding. This is going to get stitched in place, so you don't need to quilt it. But if you wanted to do some decorative quilting, you could do. Okay. And then we're going to do the same with the top of the bag. So if I turn this round, this is the top panel. 
Now I've used the same colours here, but you can use different colours as well and change it up a little bit. Totally your choice. A little spray. Press it down. You can give it a little iron, but it won't seal it. If you use our orange can, the stick and stay, that would seal it. But I like to use the temporary one. Okay, so that's that done. And then what we're going to do is stitch this onto the top of here. So it's basically right sides together. Set your machine to a quarter of an inch. And then I'm just going to whiz up there. So if you find your machine sticks a little bit with the thickness, just lengthen your stitch. I'm going to stitch this one. And because those dies have cut that out, you know that they're going to be exactly to size. Go. And then you can give that a little finger press. If you need to, you can press it with your iron. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to top stitch along the end of here. And I'm going to do the same with the other one as well. So I've done those now, the front and the back. We're now going to do the flap. So I'll pop those aside. So with the flap again, I've cut a piece of wadding and we're going to place that on there. Now with this one, I've done the two coordinating fabrics. So this is where you could have all your bag the same on the outside or you can match them up or mix and match the colours. Totally your choice. Again, we're going to spray that, press down, but this time it's slightly different. We're going to get the lining part or the contrast. We refer to it as contrast in the pattern. So we're going to put right sides together. And to get the lovely curve on the bottom of the flap, what we're going to do is stitch down the sides and across that point, And we're going to leave that open. So I'll do that now. So I've stitched all the way around there. I've clipped the curves. And then I give it a good press. And then what I've done is I've just top stitched all the way around the edge. I like to do top stitching because I think it just finishes it off. Gives it that professional look. So now we've got the flap done. We're now going to prepare the lining. So I'll pop that aside. So with the lining pieces, again, like the outer pieces, you've got your two main parts. And then you've got the top sections. And all we need to do on there is right sides together. I'm going to stitch across there and the same on the other one. And then once we've got them opened out, like the outer pieces, we're going to put them right sides together and we're going to sew all the way around here, but we're going to leave a gap in the bottom. So I'll get on and sew those now and leave that gap. Always remember to leave your gap. So I've done that now and I've done the gap at the bottom. So that's to turn it through later. But remember, this is a reversible bag. So I'm going to show you when we put the bag all together, how you make it reversible. So now we've got that done. The next thing we need to do is just prepare the handles and then we can start putting all the bag together. So to do the handle for the bag, we've got instructions again in here how to do it. This is slightly different to how you cut the main panels out. So I'm going to show you how we do it. So we've got them in here and it gives you, say you've got pictures in there again and you've got full instructions here and how to prepare it. So what you're going to do is take your desired strip for your handle and the instructions are telling you to concertina fold it. So I'm just going to show you how to do that. So all we do is just fold it up, cross over, there we go. So we've got a nice little concertina of fabric and just make sure your folds are lined up. Give them a little press so they don't spring back. You're going to pop that on your plate and then we've got the die here. Now on the die, we've got two open ends and then we've got a cut at the top and the bottom. So we're going to place that over like that. Again, pop a little bit of tape on so it doesn't move. And we're going to pop that through the Gemini. So we've cut that one now and what you'll find is when you open it out 
you're getting that long strip there that's ripped. So we're going to do two of those. So once you've got two of those cut, what we need to do is just press the seams over by a quarter of an inch on both sides, give them a good press. And then you're going to put them both together. Obviously, you'll have pressed both of them. Put them both together and top stitch down both sides. So here is the one that I've prepared. So that one's ready for our strap. You're going to do exactly the same with, with the little tabs. So if I grab a little tab. So here we've got the strap on this one. But then also we've got these little tabs as well. So we're going to make those in exactly the same way, following the instructions in the paperwork. Okay? Right, so now we can start constructing our bag. Let me get a little bit of room. So we're going to take our pieces and we can set the line in the side for now. We don't quite need that one yet. And then what we're going to do first is we're going to attach our flap onto here. So we're going to put right sides together. So that means that when the bag is finished, obviously that's going to be on the outside. But if you wanted the contrast, you could do it that way. I'm going to do the contrast. So let me put those together. So it's going to end up the outside of the bag is going to be like that. So you need to center this on here. Now, because we cut these on the fold, you'll have a little fold mark. And you can actually use that to line it up. If you've pressed it and you've pressed that fold mark out, you can use a ruler or you can use your mat. Just line it up and find your center point. My center point there is five. So I'm just gonna line that up on there and I'm just gonna stitch this onto the top of here. Again, because you're going through a lot of layers, you can lengthen that stitch if you need to, just to get it to secure. So I'll go ahead and stitch that now. So I've stitched that flap in place. So now I'm going to put right sides together. <coughs> I'm going to stitch all the way around the outside. This time, we don't need to leave a gap because we've left that gap in the lining. So I'm going to stitch all the way around there. And then I'm going to show you how to put the tabs on. So I've stitched all the way around there, so we'll now turn it through. And at this point, check that you've caught everything in. If you haven't, it's not too late to go back and just run it around again. There we go, we've got that flap. So you can see now our bag is coming together. So now we're going to put the tabs on. So the tab is to say we did exactly the same way as we did as the handle. And I've got a couple of D-rings here. So what we're going to do is slot one of those through the D-ring. And then you're just going to take the side seam. And we're just going to position that equally above the side seam. Let's pop a clip on. And the same on the other side. Now, if you don't want to put D-rings on or you don't have any, you could actually miss this step out and just insert the handle at this point. And then I'm going to take those to the machine and I'm just going to tack them in place just to hold them in. If you do it close to the edge, just so we don't get that seam showing when we add the lining. And just a few stitches. And just hold them in. We'll do the same on the other one. And then we can pop the lining in. And we're almost finished. It's a really easy, simple bag to make this one and quick as well. So you could actually, you know, spend a little bit of time cutting lots of pieces out and then you can just do all of the sewing because the sewing's the bit that we enjoy. But the dies just take out that measuring element, the accuracy. You don't need to worry about that because the dies do it for you. Right. So we've got this now ready for the lining. So we've got our bag right side out. 
and we've got the lining inside out. So we just want to place that inside and then we're going to line up those side seams. Now you can do it the other way and have the line in the right way out and the bag inside out. But I like to have it this way because then you've, you've got the gap there to pull it straight through. Just make sure you get that flap tucked in there. And if you were putting the handle on at this point, your handle would be where your little tabs are. So I'm just going to line them up. So it's always usually the same rule as right sides together. And again, I'm just going to clip those in place. And if you need to, you can pop another clip in the sides there just to hold it in place if you're not sure. I say because we cut them on the machine, they're going to line up perfectly. Now, because you've got this gap in here, this is where if you've got a free arm function on your machine, works perfectly. So I'm just going to take off the accessory box. And what you'll see is, line that up better, it actually will sit underneath the foot and it'll wrap around the machine. So that gives you a little bit more manoeuvrability when you're stitching. So again, we're just going to stitch all the way around here. finished so we're going to go into that gap and we're going to pull it through now with regard to a fastener on this you can put on a buttonhole on the flap and then you can put a button on each side I'll show you one of the samples shortly or how about using your snap fastener which is absolutely perfect and so quick so if you are afraid of buttonholes you can do that. So then we're going to put the lining inside. You'll give it a good press at this point. Oh, so we can see now how that's coming together. Okay. Right. So the next thing we need to do is put that handle on. Now, actually, no, there's one other step if you want to do it. Once you've pressed it, you can actually top stitch all the way along here if you want to. But once you've given it a good press, that will sit nice and snug anyway. Right, so we're getting the handle. So what we're going to do with the handle is, so we're going to go through one D-ring and you're just going to feed it through. And you're going to fold it over about a quarter of an inch, half an inch. It doesn't have to be too exact. I'm going to clip it for now, but you would stitch that in place to hold that in. And then on the other side, you've got a couple of options. So you can either put it through the same and clip that in place. So then you've got the single handle there. Or if you put a longer handle on, you could actually use a slider. You would fit the slider first and then you would feed it through the D-ring and then stitch it in place. And that's the bag practically finished. So let me show you the finished ones that we've got. So this one here, we've got the one with the button and buttonhole. Okay. And you know, I was saying it was reversible. So let me turn this through. We're just going to push those bits out. And then on the other side, we've also got that button on there as well so you could actually fasten it that way so it makes it a totally different bag and this one here as well we can see that we've got that rectangular slider on there as well so that's totally optional whichever way you want to put your handle on so that is how you make our reversible vintage clutch